what's up guys evil here hey uh, this is uh, gonna be just a video that is a walkthrough of my shop I do these for myself as much as anyone else because it's kind of fun to down the road to kind of look and see how things have changed and the last time I did this was literally like four years ago when I first moved in here and there was like almost nothing in here but um, I thought I would just kind of go through the shop uh, for those who wanted to see uh, stuff that I'm working on and who knows what we'll get into once I start blabbing we'll probably run into all kinds of stuff so it's uh, a bit of a mess at the moment uh, but you know what shop that doesn't have activity isn't a mess <clears throat> so um, video editing is still a big thing um, I'm not doing it as much lately uh, because I have a new son um, and having two kids keeps me very busy so I'm definitely not in the editing chair uh, as much these days still trying to uh, you know at least stay on the scene a little bit uh, still doing stuff for VP um, as well as uh, some other people RC Mart and um, that kind of stuff so um, these are my uh, video editing rigs that is a uh, quad core i5 uh, iMac um, that is an 8 core AMD um, okay I'm not gonna lie that's a gaming machine not that I get a lot of time for gaming uh, these days anymore but uh, uh, that is a pretty pretty powerful gaming machine, probably a little bit old these days. Um, what isn't old, uh, this is my new editing rig. Um, this is a quad-core i7 uh, MacBook Pro 15.4 Retina. Um, and this is what's allowed me to get a little more editing done uh, in recent months because I can do it uh, on the run when I'm away from the home. Uh, this laptop is powerful enough to do anything I need to do, um, unlike my 13.3 MacBook, which just was long in the tooth and very, <coughs> very underpowered. So this is allowing me to shoot video, get it on here, and then if I'm at lunch, at work, or or you know before or after work, I can I can do some video editing and uh, just makes life easier for me in that respect. Um, let's see what we have on the wall here as far as cars. So. I think the Wraith I probably had last time around. I've had this car for a long time. Uh, Vanquish Products demo rig. It's got about every Vanquish piece on it you can get. Um, still kind of my go-to 2.2 rig. Um, just because it's nearly bulletproof. Um, you can kind of do about anything you want to it. Uh, with the uh, exception of driving it underwater. Uh, and it holds up to about anything you want to do. Um, that's been a really great rig and probably still one of my favorites. This one is brand new. Um, that is an Axial Bomber RTR. Um, it has been recently decked out uh, with VP equipment. It has a, it's the first time I've owned a Tekken Pro 4 HD 3000 kV long can motor. Um, it's kind of a beast. I've only driven it one time um, so far, and that was just to uh, show off the Vanquish F9 axles um, for that product bid, which should be popping up here. Uh, anytime actually I need to turn it on because it just got approved today um, that is project old gold which I did several years ago before my dad passed away um, I made that for him for Christmas one year um, and uh, about a year later he passed away so I, I ended up getting it back so um, that has been sitting since that time um, this will go to my son as soon as he's old enough to drive it um, and he will have his own uh, trail truck ready to go, ready to hit Goat Hill, um, all that good stuff as soon as he's able. Um, SDX10 Rubicon JK, also a Vanquish demo vehicle. It's all decked out, uh, rock jocks, uh, OMF wheels, um, all the Vanquish goodies you could want. Um, this truck doesn't really get driven other than unless we have like a night crawl or something because it's got all the rigid lights on it and stuff. So it's really good at night, um, but that's more of just a show vehicle. Um, and anytime you know I need to do a, a product display or, or whatever, I can use that truck. And it's it's good to have a nice one uh, that's not all beat up for showing off products and stuff. Um, up here are drift cars. Um, I've cleaned out a lot of my stable on drifting because we're not doing it a lot right now. Um, but these are the two remaining uh, counter steer cars I have. Um, that is an MST MS01D um, VIP now pretty much. It's all decked out with all the goodies. 
Um, that is a Yokomo uh, DIB V2 Premium Edition. So that's like the top of the line Yokomo CS car you can buy. Um, that is a Align T-Rex 250, which I haven't flown since I crashed it. <laughs> it's just been collecting dust. Um, that is my uh, Traxxas uh, slash 4x4. Um, I haven't really driven that truck in quite a while. Um, when I had a off-road track outside of my house, I used to bash with that quite often, but uh, now it pretty much just sits. I probably need to get rid of it. That is an associated TC4. Belongs to my cousin. It's not even mine. I'm just housing it for some reason. Um, that is a Vatera V100 K&N Mustang. Um, that, that was a car that I reviewed, uh, reviewed for Big Squid RC. <laughs> Spent a bunch of time writing this big huge review and then they never published it which kind of pissed me off. May or may not have been a part of the reason why I left. Um, this is my uh, daughter's uh, Traxxas slash two-wheel drive. It's broken right now because she smashed it into a car. Um, and that's her car when she wants to drive. She also favors this little uh, Viterra, or not Viterra, Latrax rally car. There's my fish. I guess he's sleeping, or he's dead. <laughs> um, that's a cool little rally car. It's great for teaching kids because uh, it's got like a beginner mode. It slows down, all that good stuff. Um, that is a, what is that? That is a three racing Sakura D4 rear wheel drive car. Um, built that car, reviewed it for Big Squid, um, and then it became spring and summertime, which we kind of quit drifting in the summer because we're scaling and crawling. So um, that's been sitting since last year, but probably be pulling that back out here uh, as the winter months approach and we start getting uh, back inside to do RC stuff. Um, anything interesting here? Gaming rig. Um, this is my newest tool. Um, so some of you might know, some of you may not. I started when I left Big Squid. Um, I still felt like I needed to have a creative outlet um, and I needed to be more in line with what my interests were. Um, so at that point, uh, scaleandtrailrc.com was born. Um, it's essentially a blog site where I can go write about scaling, um, review products, um, that kind of stuff. Um, and it's actually doing pretty good. <laughs> like I'm not even, I'm maybe writing for it once a week or whatever, but um, it does pretty steady traffic all through the week. So. Um, I appreciate all you uh, scale guys out there keeping up and hitting the site and checking it out. Um, hopefully if it gets big enough I'll be able to get some real advertisers and you know maybe draw a little bit of money on it but uh, this uh, Canon uh, 70D is my main tool I'm using for that. It's allowing me to get really great product shots, um, really great action shots when we're in the field. It does fantastic video. Um, that is a majorly cool camera for the money. Um, for video, which obviously is kind of my thing, uh, I actually ended up torching my Hero 3 Black. I actually completely destroyed that camera. Um, it doesn't work anymore. Um, so I needed something. Um, I ran out and grabbed this Hero 4 Session. and. Like, I couldn't be happier with this camera. I do not need a $500 GoPro. These things are $199 and they're badass. It's super easy to use. At $200, bucks, you can afford to you know, have a couple of them um, you know, if the battery life doesn't suit you. Um, I carry like a cell phone charger with me, and you know, anytime I have downtime, I plug it in and charge the battery. One touch to record. Uh, it takes really good video. Not quite as good a video, but you know, definitely good enough for YouTube. That is a fantastic camera for the money. So, and you guys uh, having any doubts about spending $200 on a GoPro, that thing does a really nice job. Waterproof, all that good stuff. Not a GoPro commercial, so moving on. Um, these are all sponsor flags and stuff for my drift track. Some of you guys may have seen um, this shop occasionally transforms itself into a scale drift track. Um, that's kind of fun to play with in the winter. <clears throat> Um, Axial SCX-10 II, really cool rig, um, I only picked it up to review it, so I haven't really been driving it or anything, but uh, I pretty much built it, reviewed it, and then it's kind of sat here, <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm probably going to do some more stuff with it, but 
Um, this is a, a really nice rig. It really deserves to be driven more than just sitting around. Um, I blame the body. I'm not really into this body. Uh, so I think that makes me lack interest in it a little bit. Uh, so we'll be working on that in the coming months and driving a little more. I'm up here, servos, and all that good stuff, soldering station, um, all my legacy racing stuff. There's my associated B4 buried under the hats. Uh, used to race quite a bit with that a few years ago before my daughter was born. These are all my vintage cars. Um, I've been in RC for a really long time, and this is actually my first hobby grade uh, RC car. I still have it. Me and my dad built it when I was like 10 or 11 years old. Um, so I'm into all these vintage cars. These are the cars that I lusted after when I was a kid, but I wasn't able to afford. So as I run across them now in adult life, I pick them up. Um, that, for instance, is a Kyosho Ultima. It was always the car that was spanking me at the local track when I was driving that. Uh, but I found that car for a hundred bucks and it came with the box. Uh, a lot of you vintage guys are probably shitting your pants because the body was unpainted and the stickers are all still perfect. So uh, that car is pretty amazing at a hundred dollars. Like I say, that's the car I've had forever. Um, this is a recreation of my very first 10 scale RC car. Um, this was, it's a Nico, which I think was kind of a Tamiya knockoff back in the day. Uh, I think Nico is now New Bright, so they're still around. Um, but back when RC was starting, um, you know, they weren't making these dorky, uh, you know, kids RC cars. Everything was, you know, kind of a race car slash toy car. So that was what I started with. I, you know, had lots of great nostalgia with that car. Um, I actually had to sell it to get that. Um, so I bought this in the early 2000s when eBay first got an eBay and I've been searching for years to find parts and I've finally pretty much uh, rebuilt the thing back to exactly what I had. <laughs> I found a guy who bought out a warranty retailer and these are like 30 year old rear tires and you never see them in that kind of shape. So <laughs> it has the original tires is completely rotted off of the thing. Uh, but I found these brand new, they're brand new original tires, they'll, they'll never get driven on, they look great. Um, but anyway, that. That's a car I just like to stare at and pretend I'm a kid again. It's a Kyosho Javelin. It's a pretty coveted uh, vintage RC car. Uh, we're hoping uh, Kyosho will make them again like they did the Optima. Uh, picked that up off of a friend who knew I had a thing for vintage RC cars. Uh, thanks Jimbo for selling that to me. I, I had to make a promise that I wouldn't sell it and I could let him come over here and look at it anytime he wanted. <laughs> so there it sits. Uh, that is a Kyosho Frog, which I always wanted. That's actually a, a reissue. It's not an original, um, but uh, you know, just as cool as the original. The only difference it didn't have a mechanical speed control and stuff. Um, great looking car, really fun to drive, uh, at least by my standards. And there's Voltron. He's old too. He's just hanging out up there. So RC10 reissue. I uh, bought it a couple years ago and built it and never did much more with it and I still plan on finishing that uh, one of these days. Um, I don't know what to say about that. It's just a cool car. I wanted one that I could drive and not have to drive my old vintage one. Uh, paint and uh, airbrush. Uh, compressor. This is where I do some of my painting, airbrushing, um, all that good stuff iPod, jam some tunes, uh, just some storage, all my wiring, <coughs> wiring, sensor wires, uh, that's mainly just wiring, um, shrink tube, solder, just uh, basically just small junk around, floating around on the bench. This is probably the coolest thing I've ever bought. Uh, it's, a, it's just a little husky tool holder from like Home Depot. Um, catches everything. That thing is awesome because everything's right there in easy reach. It also functions as a motor stand. It actually looks nice when I've taken time to clean it up. Right now it's just kind of trashed. Um, this computer is my file server. All my uh, movies for uh, home theater and stuff get stored on this. It's got a RAID array on it. Um, it also does some other stuff like 
uh, downloading, it hosts my iTunes library, all that good stuff. It also runs this 24 inch plotter uh, if I need to cut some vinyl. That's my monster cable, I don't know what they call that thing, some kind of boom box. It's a cool Bluetooth speaker essentially that I haul with me to events so I can jam some tunes, it beats pretty good. Uh, this is my <coughs> product photography area, which is also kind of trash at the moment. Um, right now, I'm getting ready to do some coverage of the new Vanquish incision wheels, the 1.9s. Uh, that's the video I'm getting ready to shoot now, so just got one of those mounted up. You guys will see that in the coming weeks. Uh, toolbox, this is where I keep all traditional tools and whatnot. Nothing special there, but definitely necessities to have this stuff working on cars or whatever. This is a real disaster area. This is my char my charging area. Um, it also doubles as where a lot of crap lands, so it's my 250 racing quad I haven't touched in a year. My high-tech X4, power supplies, voltage meters, a lot of batteries and ESCs and stuff laying around over here. Another soldering station. It's all my old radios from my racing days. A couple mini helicopters. Uh, I got the flat screen down here so I can watch the Formula One or just watch TV or whatever while I'm down here wrenching. I used to spend quite a bit of time down here so it was nice to be able to turn on direct TV. This is my other kind of filming station slash workbench. Um, this is old red. A lot of you guys, you know, may recognize this thing. Um, I tore it down to build the other SCX-10, um, but I've decided to rebuild it. So old red is going to get back in action. I'm also going to use it to review these um, desert lizard shocks from Yow Racing. Um, I took some of these apart. They look like they're going to be pretty cool. So my pro lines are in. Uh, definite need of refurb at the moment so those are going to come off and get rebuilt. We'll put these on here and test them out. Um, these look They may stay on there if they're awesome. They look pretty good. Radios. Everybody has a set of F9 axles laying around, don't they? <clears throat> this is uh, uh, my Vanquish Dig transmission. It's going to go back in red here. I actually sold it a long time ago and then you can't really get them anymore so um, I kind of begged and pleaded and did some horse trading to get it back so it's going to go back in big red when it gets put back together. Got some new tires for big red's going to be all, or old red's going to be all fancy and stuff. It's got brand new tires. I uh, tore the bead on these at the last uh, G6 event so new tire time. Um, this is just parts and whatnot. Uh, lots of axial parts, O rings, wheels, I don't know, just about anything I get that I end up buying two or three of stuff sometimes. Uh, so <laughs> it ends up just hanging here until I use it. But it's handy to be able to go over here and grab something if you need it. Um, this is really just a mess. It's just kind of overflow from that work area. There's my. Uh, Fury Road body that my buddy Jay from Hobby Haven did for me. And then this is just storage. General crap. Um, grinding wheel, drill press. Um, and there's my crossbow in case zombie invasion happens. I'll be able to pretend like I'm Daryl from Walking Dead. Over here is um, this is just kind of overflow. There's a cobweb over that's how long it's been since I've walked over here. My old Venom Creeper, my old Kyosho MP 7.5. Uh, just a lot of boxes for stuff I'm not using. Storage. Uh, you name it. All kinds of stuff over here. Um, over here is drums and stuff. Uh, some of you guys may not know I'm a drummer. Um, this is the electronic kit that uh, my daughter uses so I can keep my sanity also so I don't drive my family nuts and I can practice late at night or early in the morning or whatever. Um, and then there's my acoustic drum set. Uh, it's a vintage Tama, I think maybe 2000, 2001. Um, what is it, one, five, six, seven, eight piece Tama, double bass, 
set all Zildjian symbols. Lesis DM5 trigger module for the kick. Gibraltar rack. Not RC related, but uh, anyway, always kind of wanted it, so. And I think that is my shop in a nutshell. How long is this video? We've been going for a bit. All right. <laughs> That's enough. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Um, be sure and check out scalingtrail.com if you have not. Um, I'm trying to produce a lot of content out there. I, you know, it's, it's as I have time uh, and as I get product to review or whatever. Um, so jump out there. Um, Go out to the Facebook, um, the Facebook, I sound like my mom. Go out to Facebook and uh, go to find uh, Scale and Trail. Uh, like the page if you want. It's around 180 likes at the moment, so I'm trying to grow that up. Um, jump out to Evil Villain RC on Facebook, uh, like that if you would. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm like on the verge of hitting 8K subs, which is pretty good for an old washed up YouTube producer who hasn't done anything in a year. <laughs> Anyway, trying to build that up. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys have stuck with me over the years. Uh, I know I'm not producing much, but I'll be back, man. As soon as kids are a little more self-sustainable, running around here making noise and whatnot, I'll definitely be shooting more videos and stuff. So, um, again, thank you guys for watching. Um, oh, I totally forgot. This is the newest part of my shop. I can't miss this. This table... I got from my friend Howard, Howler Custom RC, who is looking to take his business to the next level. And to do that, he's relocating to Texas, which really sucks for me. Harley already left, went to work for VP. Now Howard's leaving to go uh, follow his dream, which, you know, super happy for both of those guys, but I'm just gonna be hanging out here by myself for a while, I guess. But anyway, uh, Howard didn't wanna move this table. Um, it's this awesome, steel table on casters um, he asked me I, I think I told him a long time ago I'm like man I want that table so he was like come get it so can't miss miss that but this is awesome because I can scoot it out of the way and move it around if I need to um, it's a fantastic workbench um, it's where the the SMT uh, has been living um, while it's been worked on broke it the other day kind of pulled the rod end out of the uh, off of the tie rod, which kind of sucks. But anyway, gives me lots of storage. Keep my bags and stuff and banners. Stuff that used to be leaned up against the wall. Um, I'd say I lost, lost some floor space, but definitely gained some storage. Um, I guess I didn't do the bottom tier over here either. <coughs> this is my axial parts box. It's just full of spare axial plastics. I mean, I have to go to this way more often than you'd think. Um, but I'm always pulling parts out of there to, for various projects. Uh, FPV ground station case, radio case, charger case, uh, just day out bashing case. Um, these totes are holding uh, RC drift track stuff, all the scale accessories and whatnot. There's my daughter's uh, SCX10. <coughs> Old racing pit box and bags. Um, yeah, racing accessories, they sponsor um, events for our crawling club, so we have prizes we give away for that. Um, and I guess that's it. Some motorcycle helmets and stuff. I think I've fully covered my messy shop. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you on the next one.